for tension, sometimes for tears, and you wonder why. Everybody involved with the 10 Colts in today's race for 19-year-old Ronnie Franklin, 42-year-old Don Pierce, for the trainers and the owners, and for everybody gathered here. Let's go now to Howard for the post parade. Okay, Howard. Thank you very much, Jim McKay. Horse number one, Virginia Bread, the son of Secretariat General Assembly, the trainer Leroy Jolly. The jockey, the gifted Lafitte, and Guy Jr. In the entry, horse number 1A, the only horse to have raced in one at one and a quarter mile. Sir Ivor again, Mrs. Christopher's horse. Leroy Jolly, the trainer, Don Macbeth, the jockey. Horse number two, the winner of the Louisiana and Arkansas Derbies, Golden Axe, Sandy Hawley, the veteran Canadian rider, up and a very good one indeed. Horse number three, in surprisingly, even shocking. Great Redeemer, owned and trained by Dr. J.A. Muhammad, Richard DePass, the rider, forget about it. Horse number four, the favorite, the bid, spectacular bid, 19-year-old Ronnie Franklin up, the trainer, Garrulous Grover, Buddy Delt, and horse number five from California, Shamgo, the jockey, Frank Olivares, the trainer, John Sullivan, apparently in for the ride. Horse number six, the finishing horse, the horse with an outside chance, considered by many to be a threat. Screen King, Angel Cordero Jr., the redoubtable one, up the trainer, Luis Barrera. Horse number seven, King Celebrity, also apparently in for the ride. R.J. Taylor, the trainer, Cash Asmussen, the jockey. Horse number eight, the second choice, the California bred, flying paster with the crafty Don Pierce in the irons. And of course, the trainer, Gordon Kemp. And then the bottom horse, the number nine horse, lot of gold. Smiley Adams, the colorful trainer, the jockey, Don Brumfield, who's had a hot hand this week at Churchill Downs. So there they are, your post parade. Ten horses in all. And we approach the 105th running of the Derby. We'll be back. This buds for every... Do something. We're back at Churchill Downs, and you're looking at Angel Cordero Jr. aboard Screen King, the son of Silence Green, a horse that led in the Derby, going into the stretch with rots up but folded. Screen King, given a good outside chance by many. And Angel Cordero Jr., one of the most respected of all jockeys in thoroughbred racing. We spoke with him shortly before this time. 
What kind of chance in reality does Screen King have? I love his chances. I think it's a very close finish, and uh, he finished pretty good in the Wood Memorial, and I think the track is going to help it today. Well, how do you plan to ride the race? Well, I'm going to let him come out of there and get a good position without hurry him and sit behind the two tough horses and wait for the opportunity to wait into one of them make a mistake, and then I'm going to make a very strong run at the end. So much, Ron Hell Cordero Jr. before the running of this race. Eddie Arcaro with me. Eddie, earlier in the telecast, you suggested that the track was cuppy. For the uninitiated, what does cuppy mean? Well, cuppy means, of course, uh, that this is a sandy racetrack. It's not a solid track, and it has always been cuppy, meaning, cuppy meaning that when a horse puts his foot down, he slips back three or four inches, and that means cut. It's cuppy. All right. As we look at spectacular bid, tremendous pre-race favorite, current odds showing at three to five. Spectacular bid, only one area of controversy, the young jockey, Ronnie Franklin. Now what about Ronnie Franklin? Let's get some of his thinking at this particular moment. So much talk about Pierce's experience. Significantly, only time will tell. Eddie Arcaro has predicted that Pierce will seek to lock Franklin in. Box him out so he never gets to make his usual move in the race. Howard. Right now. Howard and That's, Eddie. Yes, yeah, I just thought it might be appropriate for those who might have just joined us to point out, although this is a cuppy racetrack, it is classified today as fast. And I talked to the uh, track superintendent about an hour ago, ago. He said, despite the torrential rains of yesterday, it's as fast as Churchill Downs gets. Well, that backs up what Lynn Stone, the president of Churchill Downs, says, Jimmy. He says that this Our track is at its fastest when it's drying out. And as we've noted, there have been two days of incessant rain. As you see the horses now going into the starting gate. Rain, track dried out, conditions excellent. And so, as the horses continue to go in, there goes the bid. Now remember, the bid was acting up some. He was acting up some in the paddock area. But he went in quietly enough, Eddie. Very good. He just walked in there like a man. Shamgo, number five, going into his position. They're having no problem loading this field so far. There is Screen King, who's had the appearance of a settled horse in the paddock area. No problem with him. Now, right. Right now, let's go up for the call of the race to our colleague, Dave Johnson. Dave. Well, there's the number one horse, General Assembly, and he's having a little bit of a problem. He doesn't want to go into that gate. And Lafitte Pinkai Jr. taps him a little bit on the side. We're oh, kicking there. The assistant starters move behind him, and they're going to, what they call, load this horse into the gate. You saw it. They close the doors behind him. The horse's uh, post positions were drawn by a lot on Thursday morning. They line up from the rail in a different order than your... Uh, Saddle cloth numbers, and that's because there's an entry of General Assembly and Sir Ivor again, both of those trained by Leroy Jolly. The last horse, the last two horses, Flying Paster and a lot of gold ready to move in. Flying Paster, second choice at two to one. And they're up! From between horses, Shamgo going for the lead on the extreme outside, a lot of gold ranging up. And it's General Assembly, now passing the stands for the first time. That sham go along the rail, General Assembly between horses, and a lot of gold on the outside, and flying pastries right there. Four of them across the track, and there's one mile to go. On the inside now, it's General Assembly. Sham go on the rail, flying pastry third, then a lot of gold on the outside, fourth. Great Redeemer, surprisingly, up in fifth position. Then it's King Celebrity, sixth on the outside. Spectacular bid is seventh. Screen King moves through eighth along the rail. Golden Act is ninth by a hit. And Sir Ivor again is tenth on the outside as they race on to the back stretch. And it's Shamgo holding on to the lead by, oh, about half a length. And General Assembly on the outside is second by three and a half. Then it's Lot of Gold, third by a length and a quarter. And on the inside, Great Redeemer is fourth by three parts of a length. Then on the outside, Flying Paster fifth by a hit. King Celebrity moves through with a rush now sixth. Spectacular bid is seventh and closing ground. That's the bid right alongside the paster as they move to the half-mile pole. Shamgo has the lead from between horses. That's General Assembly. There goes Flying Paster. Don Pierce puts Flying Paster in gear on the outside. After that, it's King Celebrity. Now they're on the far turn. And spectacular bid also makes a move. Three-eighths of a mile to go. It's General Assembly holding on to the lead on the inside. Between 
Green Horses. That's Flying Pacer, and on the outside, there goes the bid. So it's the bid on the outside. Spectacular bid gets the lead by a head. General Assembly on the inside, second, and Flying Pacer is third, and down the stretch they come, and it's spectacular bid taking the lead by a length and a half. On the inside, General Assembly is second. Flying Pacer drops back on the outside, Gold Neck coming on, but there's a sixteenth of a mile to go, and spectacular bid is going to win. second under the wire after that it was golden act and king celebrity so about seventh around the clubhouse turn ronnie franklin made a big move with the bid on the far turn and on to victory time on the board two minutes two and two fifth seconds all right well the kid did it and the bid did it Ronnie Franklin on spectacular bid with a marvelous victory in the Kentucky Derby. It's unofficial, of course, and that time of two minutes, two and two-fifth seconds is not fast but by Derby record standards. The record, of course, by Secretary at 159 and two-fifths, but that is nowhere in the top 10 or 15 times. There he is, the 19-year-old kid from Dundalk, Maryland, who has done what a lot of people thought he couldn't do. They said when the kid gets in the Derby and when those wily foxy old jockeys against him start to work their tricks Ronnie Franklin just won't be able to do it he calls his horse Big Daddy he loves him Bud Delp and Harry Meyerhoff the owner said this boy fits this coat like nobody else let's take another look at the finish with General Assembly hanging on spectacular bid headed for the wire in the first leg of a possible triple crown Bud Delp said all winner. There's no question. He's going to win the Derby. He's going to win them all. Spectacular bid. General Assembly second. Golden Act third. That is the unofficial, remember, the unofficial order of finish. Again, the time, two minutes, two and two-fifths on a fast track at Churchill Downs in Kentucky. Spectacular bid has won the Kentucky Derby. Stand by for the official result. Of course, there he is with Ronnie on his back. And again, the unofficial order of finish. Jim McKay here with Howard Cosell and Eddie O'Caro, and there is much more to come. Is Spectacular Bid right there. Now let's take a look at Spectacular Bid through the race in isolation. Here you see them coming out of the gate. Eddie Arcaro, talk about the start. Well, what he did, he said he was going to fly him out of there, Howard, and uh, let's see how he does. He does break good, but he's a horse that was... Oh, he broke in a scramble, really. But, he's, but he can't get with it, Howard. I, don't, I know that he dropped back further than, than he ever expected to. Here he's in a little trouble, and you can see Ronnie Franklin here on the inside in good position. Now watch this move. He pulls him, takes him back, and has a little trouble doing it. He's in perfect position. Takes himself out of position, gets him back, so that he's going to finally get on the outside. There he goes. He's he, he, Number four, of course, Eddie. Yes, is right. So he had to make a whole new move. And for a few seconds, it looked like it might be a repeat of the problems in the Florida Derby. He took no chance, Howard. He finally got him back and got him on the outside where this horse loves to run, outside. Inc incidentally, I want our viewers to know that you saw a circle around the three horse as our isolation began. The three horse was great redeemer. An honest mistake on the technical side. Spectacular bid, the four horse. But Ronnie Franklin, to get back to the point, this was not the this Florida the Derby move. all over again. The move, right there. The paster and spectacular bid at the far turn. And the both, key to the race. The whole key to the race, Howard. They move together and the paster's staying in front of him. But as you can see, they run by the whole field and made them look the field look bad. Uh, excepting for one horse that nobody ever thought would hold on like he did, General Assembly. And so General Assembly, as we continue to watch the race in replay, General Assembly, the son of Secretariat, was a little bit like Secretariat, yeah. though not the winner of the race. He had failed in the wood as Secretariat did, but here he ran a, a fine race with a great ride by Lafitte Pincai. Now the race is official, you perhaps heard 
the public address announcer in the background. He and look at the bid go. He certainly showed he was a good horse, Howard. He took all the worst of this race, took him back, got him on the extreme outside, and moved in the middle of the upper turn and circled the field. I don't know how you could do it any tougher than that. Okay, the kid came through, as Jimmy McKay said. Couldn't have done it better, and utterly vindicated the owners of the horse who believed in Ronnie Franklin. There are the prices, $3.20, $3.280, win, place, and show, $5.80, $3.40 for General Assembly, Golden Act, third, paying $4.20. And so, the story is written, we'll be right back. We're back at Churchill Downs. Jim McKay here with Howard Cosell and Eddie O'Carroll, and there is the final order of finish in the race. It's official. Spectacular bid has won the Kentucky Derby. General Assembly second. Golden Act, the winner of the Louisiana and Arkansas Derby third. King Celebrity, a rather surprising fourth. And Flying Pasters, second choice in the betting, was fifth. Screen King finished sixth, a disappointment there. Survivor again, the other half of Leroy Jolly's entry was seventh. Shamgo was eighth, a lot of gold ninth, and Great Redeemer, the unexpected last minute entry, was tenth and last. Right now, Bud Delp, the trainer of the winner, is over with Howard and Eddie. Gentlemen. Okay, we're here now with trainer Grover Buddy Delp, the happiest man perhaps in Louisville at the moment, and along with Eddie Arcaro, of course. Ronnie should be joining us in just a couple of seconds. He's up with Jimmy. Let's have another look at this race, because I want Buddy Delp to see it better than he saw it the first time. That's what I like. Now, here Looked like he broke to the outside. Well, now just watch, because this is not a routine race, Buddy. There was some trouble here. Take over. Okay, well, now I was a little worried right now because Ronnie's, uh, Ronnie's steadying just a little bit to be sure he's uh, not going to have to, you know, snatch up on him. Now he's coming clear, and this is when I felt confident right here. When Ronnie cleared, you know, the outside, then he, he had control of uh, the race if he had the horse. All right, Ronnie has just joined us. Ronnie, what place are you in right now? Well, I'm not really, I don't know really what place I'm in, but Look I know. There it is. I know I got my horse where I want him. I know he's well, running. Well, you're seventh, I'll tell you. He's you're running seventh. real free right where he is, and, and that's where we where well, we he was. Did you want him that far back, though? I thought you might yes, be a little I, closer. Well, he, that's where he wanted to be, and he was running okay there. And I knew that he, he just had his feet under him real good, so I kind of let him do what he wanted to do the first part. And as soon as he straightened down a back stretch, Ronnie, you make right a here. big move here. Yes. Get it when you come up on the outside of Flying Paster. Right. He he picked up the bit real good as soon as he got down the backside, and then he went on with it. He, he here is the move. Here's a big move. Right now, here you are on the outside. Right. Were you running easier than Flying Paster? I'm running a lot easier than any horse up there right now, and my horse looked Flying Paster in the eye, and he just kind of spit it right out. I knew I had him, and then Screen King come back and come back on. General Assembly. That is General Assembly. Oh, that's General front, uh, Assembly. Okay, yes. I'm sorry. On the rail. But well, you, you, it looked like you had dead aim on him. Were you letting yes. your horse run at that time? No, I, not really. I wasn't really letting him get him, you know. I asked him a little bit to keep his mind on his business. Did he and they kind of banged good? me around the turn a little bit. They were bumping me a little. He handled the track perfect, and I only hit him like three or four times oh, with the stick. He's reaching good. And yeah. he just went easy, I'd have to say, just like any other race, Mr. Oh, O'Carroll. Oh, it is. He's... He sure did a good, See, did a great, this, great job on him. I thought you were in trouble coming to the first turn, but you handled it like a veteran. Really, you did. Thank buddy, you. And I'm proud of you. Yes, sir. He's some kind of horse. He is terrific. <laughs> look at him. I love it. I oh, love look it. at that horse. Shoot, he's great. <laughs> yeah, hi, mom. Hi, dad. They're out in the stand. They're not going to hear you. Granddaddy. Oh, so at yeah. age 19, <laughs> this is the kid of this year. A year ago was Stevie Cawthon who won the 2,000 guineas today. As Jimmy told you, the first leg of the British Triple Crown. And now today, another 19-year-old has done it. Oh, your head's so, up in the air now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, all the talk about the crafty and very fine jockey Don Pierce outmaneuvering you didn't come to pass, did it? Mm, well, no, not really. <laughs> As a matter of fact, didn't the pace to surprise you, the way you went past it? Other, yes. Well, I had the horse, you know, I was going pretty easy, and I thought he'd come right on. he come, he was right there for about 70 yards, and he just quit, you know. Interesting observation. Now, you said, Buddy Delp, in an interview, that 
spectacular bid might be better than Secretariat. Do you want to amplify? Well, I, uh, I'd have to, I'd have to <laughs> check the track out today. Of course, he was 202 and two, but I think the track was probably a little on the dead side. Wouldn't you say so, Howard? Well, they had told us that the conditions were very fast, close well, to sure lightning fast, really? but the figures don't reflect no. that. However, the agent Lenny Goodman, the Damon Runyon S character, is the one who said, "Time only matters when you're in prison, so fine. forget about." Yes, it. I'll take it. He ran but a great race, and uh, he beat some very, very fine horses in here today. I'm, he sure did. I'm happy. I'm glad to be going back home with this cold a winner in the Kentucky Derby. I really feel good. See you at the break. Thanks, Mike. Howard. And I want to say hello to my grandfather and Larry Bundy and Maggie and uh, my mother. That's Congratulations. It. Congratulations, yeah. Ronnie. You. you really deserve it. Thanks. Right now, let's move it on up to Jim McKay. All right, here we are on the victory stand, the presentation stand. Lynn Stone, the president of Churchill Downs, Governor Julian Carroll. Just before you come in here, Governor, let's have a word with the winning owners, Harry Meyerhoff. Congratulations, Thank Harry. You, you said much, it was going to happen, and now it has. Yeah, we're very, very, very pleased. And here is Teresa Meyerhoff. You came up here and you said, I can't believe it. You believed it ahead of time. Why not now? <laughs> well, there's always a, a chance of something happening, and we knew we had the best horse, and I think he certainly proved it today. And there's Tommy Meyerhoff, 26 years old yesterday. Congratulations you. to you. He almost got kicked by his own horse down here in the winner's circle. Governor? Thank you very much, Jim. And certainly to all of our friends who have just seen the 105th running of the Kentucky Derby. Indeed, we want to give our personal congratulations to Spectacular Bid and to Mr. Meyerhoff and certainly to Buddy Delp and to Ronald Franklin. Indeed, it was a great race and I know all of our friends both on television, Jim, and around the world have enjoyed the great running of the Kentucky Derby. It's my pleasure now to present to Mr. Meyerhoff this beautiful trophy, Mr. Meyerhoff. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> God, that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Couldn't be prettier. Spectacular trophy there. <laughs> <laughs> On the Baltimore homeland and the Preakness, huh? Jim, we have also this, this trophy for the jockey and have an additional one for Buddy Depp, the uh, trainer, and additionally for the breeders. Okay, that's just fine. And here is Lynn Stone, the president of Churchill Downs. Lynn, congratulations again on a marvelously run derby day. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jim. Obviously, the weatherman cooperated. We want to express our welcome to everyone here, congratulate the winners, and hope that Across the board, so I'm, I'm a little in the money. You're happy. Yes, I'm happy. <laughs> I thought you were going to leave some Hollywood money here. <laughs> no, no. You've been coming here several years. You have no. an affinity for... Oh, well, this is my second year, right, and it's very exciting. We're guests of Preston and Anita Madden, and we went to their party last night, which was fantastic. Nothing in Hollywood is like that, so is it's exciting. She's really the hostess with them. Yeah, the really. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, I did a movie called The User and uh, we had a party, and extra but it didn't compare to that one. Listen, so Dennis exciting. is waiting. Faith is going to interview Dennis. Just between us, what kind of a husband is he? Wonderful. Dennis Perfect. Cole is everything yeah. a man should be. He's everything you dream about. <laughs> when are you going back to Hollywood? Tonight. And, and uh, what are you, when are you going back to shoot some more of your show? Uh, June 11th. Will you do one thing? We have only seconds left. Give them that wonderful smile into our camera. Okay. And leave me out of this, please. <laughs> no, stay in. I like it. I'm shy. Bye. My best part of the day, Jacqueline Smith. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Milton Metz at Millionaire's Row at Churchill Downs. Thank you, Milton, Jacqueline, and now let's have a review from our expert of this Kentucky Derby 105. Here's Dave Hooper to pair Dennis Cole, actor, television, movies, and I think your, your color combination just goes so well with what Jacqueline's wearing. Thank did you, you all plan that? Oh, you betcha. Did you have a winner? No. <laughs> How did you come out, then? Well, we came out uh, with uh, Golden Act, which is a California horse. We had the vote, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, for the California horses, but... Uh, uh, at least one came in. Oh, I don't know what happened to Flying Pastry. He just, uh, yeah. I think he's still up and running. I think a lot of people are disappointed <laughs> with that one. What's the attraction? Now, this is your second time. What is no, it about this? No, this is my the... seventh time. Wow. The, uh, Madden's, Preston and Anita Madden are very dear friends of mine from Hamburg Place. And I met them a number of years ago, and I've been coming back. They've invited me through the years, and I've been back. And this year, I couldn't miss it again. And now I'm a married man, so I, this is the second time for my wife. Yes. What is it, basically, the First attraction? First time as my wife. As second wife. time as uh, a derby uh, patron. What do you think's the basic attraction of the derby itself? It's just the history of it. You know, there's a, there's a great... I don't know, my first time I came, I think it was, well, six years ago, and it was so thrilling to come out here and see Churchill Downs. You know, I'm an actor, and I've seen so many times this setting on the movie screen, and to be out here, it was, it was a thrill for me, truly. 
and so now I'm I'm uh, out You're here hooked. again. I'm I'm hooked for it. it. It's really a wonderful thing, and then singing my old Kentucky home. See, I like Southern people. I understand. So well, my wife is from you. Kentucky. Ah. Or my wife is from Texas. So well, we'll look Southern for you too. next year. Thank, Thank you. you, Dennis Cole. Ron, how was it? Can you tell me about it. Great, real great. I was a little surprised to see you back so far early in the race. Well, that's where he wanted to be, so I'll let him be there. <laughs> An interview on the run. Now let's find out some more on Derby 105, some insight into how the race was won. Here's Dave Conrad and Kay Wood Ledford. I'm with Kay Wood Ledford again on the clubhouse roof, and here's the man who called the worldwide the 105th run for the Roses here at Churchill Downs this afternoon. Everybody said spectacular bid, spectacular bid won it. Uh, were you surprised at all with the outcome of the race from the standpoint second, third, and fourth? Uh, really, I thought General Assembly, who finished second, ran a very...